Hello and welcome to Viewpoint. I'm joined today by Dr. George Foti. He has just returned from Odessa, the Black Sea city in South Ukraine. Um, he's been observing the local elections there. George, many, many thanks for joining us. I'm happy to be here. Happy to be happy to have you back again in the, in the studio. Um, it's great. It's like I never left. <laughs> um, you've been uh, in Odessa for the UCCA, correct? Uh, observing the uh, local elections. Correct, yeah. Yes. Um, so we, we saw the, earlier the uh, press release from the UCCA. It said that the elections in Odessa had been uh, largely uh, well-run, transparent, uh, in line with international standards and democratic standards, you know, more or less. Um, Unpack that a little bit for us. Tell us a little bit more on the ground. What was it like and, and, and what did you see? Well, first of all, it was my first time to Odessa and I love the city. The city center is beautiful. Uh, I love to go back in the summertime. Uh, our mission as an observer, and it's my third mission, uh, first time was with the World Congress, the Canadian delegation. Second time with, was with the OCE. And now with the uh, Americans under the World Congress. Again, UCCA is the Ukrainian Congress Committee of America. Uh, and our mandate is to observe. Yes, You're one of a number of observer missions down there. Yeah, so. yeah, we were number one of a number. And we're just to observe, and we're supposed to understand the protocol and understand election law. Okay. And we just watch, walk in, and monitor. We can ask questions. We can take pictures. Yeah. Uh, and we can, if we see that something's not right, we can't ask for it to be changed, but we can bring it to the polling station attention usually to the director of the polling station. Okay. So if we notice that something's not according to protocol or, or according to uh, Ukrainian law, election law, then we report it. And okay. uh, that gets sent to the central, central okay. office of the UCCA. And did you find, was, did that happen to you on, on, on many occasions? Did you see there were things wrong and you had to go and speak with the polling director and, and things changed? What was that interaction like? How, how the, what was the response like that you, that you got from that? The response was very good. Um, most polling directors are very well informed of election law. There were a few stations where the, uh, the polling director was changed two days prior to the elections, and that is a little suspicious. So okay. you might want to spend more time observing in, uh, in a station like that. Absolutely. Did you worry there about the independence of these polling directors? Is that... Yes, what do you mean? yes, because I understand there's a quota from each party and they have the right to uh, assign. And if, if they have the right to assign a director because of their quota, then they can assign somebody. So there, was a, a, there were situations where uh, there were two very young polling uh, directors, or, or sorry, um, polling station directors, and we decided to pay specific attention uh, to those two stations. One was very well run. Uh, but the other one, there was, uh, there was a little bit of stuff going on outside. Oh, really? Okay. What kind of things? Let us, uh, let us in on that a little bit. What, what kind of things did you see? Again, as an observer, I, I cannot speculate on what was happening. I can just report what I saw. Yes. So, for example, a policeman, a senior officer, was in his car, and I heard, uh, because I speak Ukrainian fluently, so okay. I, I can understand Russian a little bit, uh, I heard uh, him give the order to fill out the, uh, the report. So I walked up to the uh, policeman and I said, what kind of report are we talking about? He said, well, there was somebody in the uh, booth taking a picture of the ballot. Right. So I have direct, that's a direct observation. Yes. Uh, and that's against law. Okay. You're not allowed doing that. Uh, and and, and, the, and it, people take pictures of their ballots here because they then need to prove to someone that they voted for a particular person or a particular party. Yes. Uh, uh, just continue. That, along with the fact that there were a lot of people hanging around that polling station on the outside, that's what we look at. We don't okay. only just go inside right. and check the protocols being followed. Yes. We also look in the area to see, you know, is that, why is that guy standing by his car with a cup of coffee and, and a cell phone? He's just standing there. So I mean, that sounds like maybe we're talking maybe there's slight intimidation going on or that it's in the air or what are we looking for there? Mostly we're looking for vote buying and carouseling. Okay. That, that's, that's the most popular way of trying to influence a vote. Carouseling, sorry, unpack that for us. Carouseling, this is like taking voters around different polling stations. This is going into a polling station, getting your ballot, pretending you drop it into the ballot box, you mm -hmm. drop something else in, and then you take your empty ballot out. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. They then mark, the, whoever's doing the carouseling marks that ballot. Ah, uh, right. The next person that comes in gets an empty ballot. They throw the marked ballot in. They bring out another empty ballot. Okay. And so okay. it keeps going around and around yep. for the same candidate. Yeah. And that's been known to happen. Uh, I think it was uh, suspected, uh, highly suspicious in Jatomir, if I read the uh, UCCA statement correctly. Uh, the other one is uh, taking a photo of your ballot and showing it to somebody out there, and you get, you know, two, three hundred hryvnia. Right. I think this was going on in Kiev, as I heard from the report, a report okay. on, on the news. Uh, 
but in minor, in a very minor fashion. It didn't, it, none of these events, uh, apparently to the, by the OSCE and UCCA, uh, had enough uh, impact on the results. Okay. Well, that's, uh, that's good, good, good to know. Um, it, it seems to me that overall, um, and perhaps I'm about to have to step out of your role here as an observer and just answer as a, as a citizen, but um, it seems to me that what all this kind of comes down to is the question of, of trust. Um, Ukrainians, you know, they cast ballots, they put, a, they put a piece of paper in a box, but do they ultimately believe that that is going to make a difference? Or do they feel that the, the results are already decided anyway? Um, the reason, because we have observer missions coming to this country, and we, we hope that gives these, these elections credibility and people will trust the results, but I feel that that's not always the case, in spite of what maybe a press release might say, that it was democratic and fair and transparent. Um, ultimately, we feel that there is something here that is undermining them. Do you agree with that? Yes, I do. Uh, not the electoral process. Uh, as observers, uh, every observing uh, group has... Uh, testified that the, the democratic process, the election process, is fair and transparent. But there are other forces. Yes. As, a private, as an observer, I shouldn't be commenting on those. As a private citizen, I think I can. That um, there's the business of elections. And I don't think the... Because democracy is young in Ukraine, I don't think the average person understands the business of holding an election. And so they think that if they cast their vote, it should count and vote in the nicest person or the most decent person, or in Ukraine, most likely you'd say the least corrupt person. Mm -hmm. But the least corrupt person may not be in the business of, of winning an election. No. And so it's the people who understand the business that invest heavily in preparing for the elections are usually the, one that win, the ones that win. And I think it's going to take a lot of time and a, and a lot of education of the public for them to understand the business of holding elections. And what could we say to, to those Ukrainian voters who feel disillusioned? Um, going back to Odessa, for example, we have candidates there who are dressed up as Star Wars characters. Yeah. Um, now, you can read that in, in different ways. You can just say that's, you know, some people having fun. Um, but others point to something a little uh, uh, more, perhaps, uh, more worrying. Where they say this is actually an expression of people who just believe that these elections don't matter. I mean, you can just turn up as Chewbacca uh, because, really, at the end of the day, it doesn't make a difference. Uh, what, what can we say to them um, about... Is there, is there cause for hope? Canada's got a very strong democracy, I believe, and we have the Rhino Party. I don't know if you, you remember, you know, the Rhino Party. It's a joke. Yeah. Uh, it's people who just want to have fun during the elections, sure. but they're burning votes for no reason. Um, uh, I think the, the, the population has to understand that every single vote counts in a democracy. And people, as you said, have become disillusioned because no matter how they vote, it's still the same old, same old. Yeah. Again, the business of elections. And so they drop off, and so what, what did we have? 46% of voter turnout. Which is not bad by which isn't European bad. standards, actually. Which isn't bad, actually. But you know, imagine if they had 70% turnout, yeah. 80% turnout. If anybody said, okay, I get the uh, issue of the business of elections, I'm going to go out and vote anyway, and maybe my single vote will count, and their, my neighbors and the other people, but staying at home and saying that uh, what I do is not going to affect anything, I think it's folly. Um, we're a little bit short on time, so I'm going to have to bring this to a close, George. But um, I just want to ask you, so, I mean, with these local elections, they've had their share of, uh, you know, uh, violations and the usual sort of things we see in Ukraine, perhaps less than previous years, but uh, it's been there. But um, some people say it's good, we've drawn a line now, and we can push on with reforms, it's, it's going to, things are, you know, going to move forward. Others say, actually, well, we've just pretty much got the same guys back in power that we always had, and a lot of people who have won these elections are aligned or were aligned with Viktor Yanukovych, who was ousted in a revolution a couple of years ago. Um, I have a feeling that you, because you're a patriot of this country, if I may say so, um, you believe that actually this is a, a platform and a good starting point and we can move forward. Um, is that, am I correct in, in my understanding of your view here? As a, as a private citizen and an election observer, uh, yes. Um, it's going to take a long time. A democracy doesn't happen overnight. And every step forward is a positive step, even if you're taking three steps back after that one step forward. But I think this country, uh, the election process is transparent, democratic. You couldn't say that in 2004. There are fewer and fewer uh, machinations, uh, irregularities that are being observed. That's a positive step. And here and there, they're actually, I, if I can say, less corrupt or non-corrupt people coming into 
uh, areas of influence. We hope that the anti-corruption, I personally hope that the anti-corruption committee and the anti-corruption bureau uh, gain some teeth and has, is, has effectiveness. I think all these things are going to take time. All right. Well, we'll be looking closely to uh, everything that goes on in the future in this country. Dr. George Foti, many, many thanks for joining us. Pleasure. I hope to be, come back, be coming back again sometime. Fantastic. Uh, you've been watching Viewpoint. You've been watching Viewpoint. I've been jo joined by Dr. George Foti. He's been observing the local elections down in Odessa. This is Ukraine Today. Join us again tomorrow for another edition.